Hi guys, Jay Smith here. Welcome to Ask Golf on our channel and welcome to a versus head to head. We have the Mizuno Pro 245 against the brand new JPX 925 Hot Metal Pro. These are bridging irons. These are designed for the golfer that wants to look at trying to play something possibly within the Mizuno Pro range in the scoring irons, but then needs the extra help that the potential JPX 925 Hot Metal series will give when it comes to the lower further back center of gravity, the tungsten now inside the new JPX 925 range, and the extra forgiveness that you're going to get from one of these. We will be testing forgiveness between these two and also we look at the differences in swing speed what happens when you dial swing speed down 70 80 90 miles an hour comparison between these two i'm at wentworth hole 10 about 170 eight or so yards away we will do the mizuno pro 245 first it is the most forgiving of the pro range hollow head design it's got copper underlay it has got tungsten a massive update and upgrade in the amount of tungsten than the 245 over the 225 the 245 is a big upgrade over the old normally when you're talking about model iteration changes it's sort of minimal small amounts little chunks here and there but this was a really big update to really compete with the likes of the tailor-made P790. So looks on this one, we have a fairly narrowish top line. And again, if you compare to that of the Hot Metal Pro, it has got a thinner top line than the Hot Metal Pro. Sole thickness, yes, we definitely have a thinner sole than that of the Hot Metal Pro and blade lengths it is a nicer, smaller looking blade length. This one has copper underlay, so it should feel nice and soft. That's a block. I, this pin is on the right hand side. Is it going to, oh, just off the green. Not bad delivery really. 1.1 from the inside, 1.3 open. There you go. That's why it's going off to the right because I basically told it to. Uh, 38 yards in the air though and 49 degrees descent angle at a total of 177 yards. This is a 30 degree lofted seven iron. So this is the same within reason loft as my six iron. But what are you gonna get from these when it comes to the tungsten inside this, you're going to get a little bit of help when it comes to the low strikes. On this thing with the tungsten being low down there, when you do hit it slightly low on the face, you're gonna get a little bit more assistance. Feel wise, out of the MP range, yes, this is the most explosive of the lot, but because it has got that copper underlay, it does feel soft softer potentially than that of the hot metal pro go give it another hit see if we can actually hit target this time better delivery it was slightly toey though should we say i could feel it straight away stopping fairly well delivery's not bad 1.1 from the inside on the path Face is slightly baby clothes and six mil toe. I could pick up that toe straight away. And this is what you're going to see as a, as a trend, as a transition throughout the whole set. Even though the JPX 925 Hot Metal Series is pretty good at it, as soon as you go down to the blade side of things, you get ultimate feedback. I can distinctly feel that that is even just a quarter of an inch off of a geometric middle. 37 yards in the air and nearly 49 degrees descent angle at 179. So it's doing exactly what I'd expect my six iron to do. But remember, this is the length of a seven iron where my six iron normally is half inch longer. So the head would travel a little bit faster. And so we're gaining that extra distance in the fastest the speed from that face. These will blend really well. There's two degrees of loft difference, 30 degrees for a seven iron against 28. But again, these can be moved around quite a lot when it comes to its loft uh, and its light. So you shouldn't have any problems whatsoever blending these two sets. It's mainly at what point would you want to blend into a hot metal pro? Would it be the seven iron, the six iron, the eight iron? It's up to you and what kind of help you need from either one. Last one before we go over to the Hot Metal Pro. Little baby fade uh, dynamics feeling, but I mean, it's just working so well. Just at the edge of the green, club path 0.6 across, face open by 0.7 degrees. That's it, little baby fade dynamics. One mil hill, four mil low, so pretty decent strike. Can't complain whatsoever on that one. And 35 yards in the air and 47 and a half degrees descent angle, 178. 178 yards is exactly what my six iron does. Same loft as my six iron, 30 degrees. But again, this is slightly shorter in shaft length than my six iron. So you're getting that extra speed from that face. Right, let's go flip over to the JPX 925 Hot Metal Pro. Let's go see how it differs from that of the 245 and necessarily at what point golfers should be thinking about blending from one to the other. 
As if by magic, I am back with the Hot Metal Pro in my hands and the data set is now changed. So the Hot Metal Pro is the smallest of all of the JPX 925 Hot Metal range. You've got the standard Hot Metal and also the High Launch. The High Launch is there for more of the slower swinging golfer to try and get as much loft, launch, spin, peak height, descent angles, etc. Where the Pro is designed of all the help that you're going to get within the same JPX 925 Hot Metal range, but with a smaller package. Everything is slightly smaller smaller on this one. So top line is the smallest of the lot. No different that to the sole. Even though it is a bigger sole, it has got a trailing edge bleed off. It's kind of chamfered off at the end. Compare it up against to a 245. It is a fraction bigger. It's not massively bigger. It's not something that if you put them both down by the golf ball, it goes like bang. You can really distinctly tell the difference of two. But it's just that when you're talking about like long irons and the transition between what the general blend would be between 245 and Hot Metal Pro, you are talking about the extra help and forgiveness you're going to get from the slightly bigger dimensions. Right, give it a hit, see how it works. Again, this has got no copper underlay that the 245 has got, so it might sound a little bit louder. Little baby pull, can't complain whatsoever, but as you can see, these are slightly stronger lofted, so will go slightly longer. Club path is 0.9 from the inside and face is baby closed, as it one degree closed, that's why we're getting a little baby draw. Uh, seven mil toes zoom were low, so not bad strike whatsoever, and then 38 yards in the air and 48 degrees descent angle, 186 yards. Yes, it does feel different to that of the 245. The 245 is softer. This is a little bit more explosive. Again, it is cast where this one over here, the 245 is forged, but it does have the copper underlay where this one doesn't. But again, it's working extremely, extremely well. That's a bit straighter to target. As you can see, straight over the target, distance wise a bit longer. Club path and face to par, very good. Again, five mil toe, three mil high, so very close to middle, single digit miss, can't complain. Um, 38 yards in the air, 48 degrees descent angle, and again, one, eight, six, doing exactly what I'd expect to do from a slightly stronger, lofted, slightly more explosive iron. Now, so the swung song in the JPX 925 range is the fact that it is not faster than the old 923. Mizuno have said that within the 923, they made the face as fast as they're legally allowed to, but what they have done with the JPX 925 series is make it more forgiving. So there's an elliptical thing, image up on the screen, which basically means they've been able to mill out a bigger part of the face on weird and wonderful parts of strike that gives you that extra ball speed back. Now they can do that because they're now milling this from a two piece construction rather than a single piece of construction cast idea. They can get access to the back and so they can mill the back out. And it does work very, very well when it comes to its forgiveness. Not a bad one to finish, as we can see. Over the pin again, because it's stronger. Club path 0.2 from the inside, face to path 0.7 closed. Little baby draw, that's why it's missing fractionally left, but not bad whatsoever. Um, strike is really good, zero mil toe, zero mil low, right out of the screws, and peak height is just over 36 yards in the air, and 47 and a half degrees descent angle, will carry of 188, so it's really consistent for distance as well. So the JPX 925 Hot Metal Pro, blended with that of the Pro 245, you can really see people blending the Pro 245 where they go slightly stronger in the loft of the 245 or weaken off in the 925 to get the right gappings. And again, within a couple of yards or so, we're seeing the right amount of gapping per loft, maybe a degree or so in it, but you'll have to check that within your own custom fits. Remember, this is the whole idea of these irons and with all the irons in Mizuno range, make sure you get custom fit to make sure you get the lofts correct, etc. So let's go whack these a load of times all over the face to see what kind of forgiveness uh, we have, the difference between the two, if one reacts better to the other. So let's go see how well these two get on. All the shots now hit with the Mizuno Pro 245 against the Mizuno JPX 925 Hot Metal Pro, very long name. I've done this at 90 miles an hour. Why have I done this at 90 miles an hour and not 80 and 70 miles an hour like I do with my full reviews, and I've done them in my full reviews of these two irons? Because if there's a difference between these two irons at 90 miles an hour, the difference between them at 80 and 70 will be smaller. If there's no difference at 90 miles an hour, well, there'll be no difference at any speed, so it doesn't matter. And I've also captured the forgiveness data. What happens when you don't hit the middle? Which one of these two irons are going to be more forgiving and so for blending, etc. So on the screen, you can see 
I have the Mizuno Pro in red and the 925 Hot Metal Pro in blue, HMP from now on. Uh, ball speed on the Pro 245, 122.1, and on the Hot Metal Pro, there is 125.3. So 3.2 miles an hour extra ball speed on the Hot Metal Pro. Again, this is the newer golf club, but effectively it's, uh, there's gonna be a slight loft difference. We'll go into that in a sec. Uh, launch difference, there is only one degree, uh, 20.1 to 19.1. Spin basically is no difference whatsoever. They're both spinning at 5,000 RPM. You could argue that the Hot Metal Pro may be spinning a fraction more, but guys, it's well within standard deviation, so effectively they're both exactly the same. Uh, carry 180 yards to that of the Pro 245 and carry 183, three yards extra on the Hot Metal Pro. But the interesting thing is they both peak height at 38 yards. So if they both peak up at 38 yards and descent angle is within 0.4 of a degree, that three yards extra that the Hot Metal Pro has is three yards. Now the good news is from a blending point of view that three yards is only three yards. If it was 13 yards or 23 yards that would be difficult for gapping and you'd have to make sure you really mess around with lofts etc but the fact that it's only three yards within reason that is one degree depending on speed at 90 miles an hour at least so you absolutely can blend these without worrying about gapping issues. You can see there though, we go by the club head data, 90.1 to 90.3, so only 0.2 of a mile an hour difference. The efficiency though, 1.36 to 1.39, you do get a little bit more bang for your buck out of the Hot Metal Pro. Now the Hot Metal Pro, it launches slightly lower and spins slightly more where the Pro 245 launches slightly higher and spins slightly less. The reason why there's that is the Pro 245 has got a massive update in or upgrade in tungsten. There's a lot of weight down the bottom there, so it does a really good job job of getting that golf ball launching and of course with a little bit of vertical gearing it takes the spin away a little bit um, but it's exactly in line within reason of that of the hot metal pro Just slightly under but that's basically it uh, attack angles within 0.7 degree and club paths etc are very very close loft there is one and a half degrees difference between these two and within half a degree, that's exactly what the static loft difference is. And the only thing I would say out of the two, I hit the Hot Metal Pro slightly worse. Five mil, or sorry, seven mil toe gross across laterally. A one mil heel to six mil toe. But again, laterally across the face is hardly anything whatsoever. But talking about forgiveness, this is the important thing. So if we were going to go from the idea of trying to understand which one is more forgiving, nowadays, as my reviews have evolved, um, I am now starting to introduce introduce uh, face mapping or heat mapping as such. So you can see what happens when you hit enough shots. You can see what happens when you hit certain parts of the face and what drop off you get. And so I've got the Pro 245 heat map first. You can see there that again, we've got zero at the top and zero on the left and it runs from minus 22 to plus 22. And on the right hand side is the heel and on the left hand side is the toe. High on the face is plus 22 and low on the face is minus 22. Every single millimeter you move across, the percentage loss you are going to get. So if you know you are a golfer that hits the toe a lot or hits slightly low on the face a lot, you can then get an understanding of which golf club, because all golf clubs are different, and how their faces work, which one is going to be more forgiving and helpful out of the two. So if you're gonna have a look at that one, we'll flick over straight away to the Hot Metal Pro. Instantly you can see one thing. Flicking over between the 245 and the Hot Metal Pro, instantly you see there's a bigger green blob. Green is good, yellow is okay, red is not. But the fact that you've got a bigger green blob on the Hot Metal Pro to that of the 245 shows that the 245 is slightly less forgiving than that of the Hot Metal Pro. So if we go side by side, you can physically see the differences between there. And I've got the information up on there from the millimeters across up and down, left and right. So you can compare them if you know your strike pattern, but you can visibly see that the Hot Metal Pro is slightly more forgiving. This is where the Hot Metal series really gets into its stride. It is just so, so forgiving off a lot of the face. The 245 is pretty darn good considering it is a game improvement iron and it is in the Mizuno Pro side of things, but especially when you go into your longer irons, mid to longer irons, you are going to need that help. So absolutely, if you do not hit your long irons or mid irons very well, absolutely be blending into the Hot Metal Pros is going to help you no end. Why is that important? Well, if you actually go to a uh, green 
image that will pop up on the screen there, you can see you've got a forced carry. Let's just imagine this, 155 yards, which is a common distance for an 80 mile an hour swing speed golfer around about the seven iron kind of idea. Um, and you can see if you start deviating around the face and you start getting drop offs, it doesn't take much before you can see there on, on, on the graphic that as soon as you start going red, you start, well, going in the drink. It will be that one. And so you are looking for the most uh, efficient and the most uh, forgiving golf club if you are going to miss the middle. And of course, on the table on the left hand side, you can also see what kind of distance in feet and also meters on the bottom of putt you are going if you imagine you had a massive green if you're going to lose uh, say 10 percent or five percent from your miss hit we can see actually on the face map you're going to see how much of a putt you're going to get oh not say going to get but you're going to have if you don't hit the middle so when it comes to the conclusion between these two, obviously let's just go by looks first. 245 is more of a bladed look. Obviously it's not a blade. There's a lot of technology going on in the back there. We've got the tungsten in there. We've got a little bit of chromoly, et cetera. It blends into the grain flow forge at a higher lofts, et cetera. But you have got copper underlay on there to try and keep that. Nothing feels like a Mizuno feeling. The Hot Metal Pro is the JPX925, so it is the game improvement side of things, but being the Hot Metal Pro, it is the smallest of everything, as in the smallest top line, the smallest sole, the smallest blade length, smallest amount of offset. However, it still is still fractionally bigger than that of the 245. Sound, again, when it comes to the 245, it wins from a softness point of view, and the Hot Metal Pro has a little bit more of a click to it. However, out of all the game improvement irons, because of the nothing feels like a Mizuno idea ethos that Mizuno like, the 925 Hot Metal series are one of, if not the quietest, softest game improvement irons from everybody. Performance, they both work very, very well. You do have the pattern of the 925 Hot Metal Pro being a fraction faster. You will gain a little bit extra free distance but it's only marginal. It's only a matter of two or three yards. And so for blending point of view, you've got no problems blending them. This is the only thing obviously with one being 28 degrees and one being 30 degrees. They actually work very, very well together. It's just that's more of a measure of how well the 245 works as a player's distance iron more than anything else. Have a chat with your fitter when it comes to you doing your uh, custom fittings and making sure you get the right gapping, the right blend, exactly for what you need because this is how i deliver if you deliver slightly differently you will need always a little bit of a tweak so hope you like the video if you did go on a big thumbs up youtube like so do i down there is a subscribe button it's free it is great for the channel if you could subscribe so thank you and next that is a bell icon that's a notification bell if you click that one that will notify you next time i upload another video so i hope you well see you again soon